Gardeners, get ready to fall in love with quail. All of these containers are filled with promise and a whole lot of quail waste. Guten gardening, everybody. Well, it's been just over a year since we started our adventure raising quail. And I can tell you that as gardeners, we have found them to be excellent companions to our garden. There's so much of what we get from our quail that we can reuse, repurpose in our garden. Anytime you're raising animals, there's a lot to consider in terms of how you have to take care of them, etc. But we think there are so many positives when it comes to quail, especially as a gardener, that this might be the perfect fit for you. Now, typically when people talk about gardening, the reason they do it isn't just as a hobby. They're trying to grow food for their family, to reduce their dependence on the store, to become more self-sufficient. And when it comes to reducing that dependence on the store, one of the things we need to do is to add in a source of protein. And so as a gardener, one of the things you're doing is adding in vegetables. And now this is an additional way to add in protein in the form of quail eggs. Quail eggs that can be combined with elements from the garden, for example, to make things like the pasta noodles that we just showed you on our community page this morning. And so one of the things we get as a benefit here, just in the baseline, and what most people think of when they think of quail, I think, are growing them for eggs and for meat. Now, if you've seen our previous videos, you know our setup, what it looks like, but one of the things that I'd like to point out that I love about quail is that they don't take up nearly as much space as a lot of other animals. And so that's one of the benefits, especially if you're gardening in a smaller location, similar to what we're doing. We have over a hundred quail in here, but I would say for a family of four, you'd need about 24 eggs in order to have a good meal. And so what that means for us is you likely want to have at least around 30 quail if that's what you're trying to feed in terms of your family. That'd be about a five to one or maybe six to one hen to roo ratio. Now, if you'd like to know more about how long quail live and how many eggs per year they lay, you can check out our video on 13 things you should know about quail if you're considering raising them. That's a jam-packed video and I'll put a link in the description. So they don't take up a ton of space. They provide us with a bunch of eggs and they provide us with a source of meat whenever we have to call or butcher them. But that's just the beginning of their benefits, especially when it comes to them, what we can use in our garden. Well, I started the video here, but let's talk about one of those key elements that quail bring to our garden. That is the nitrogen, potassium, and phosphorus that exists in this amazing quail waste. Now, the average person raising livestock of any kind are going to have to understand that there's going to be waste. But as gardeners, that term waste is almost deceiving because what we have here certainly isn't going to go to waste. Instead, after several months of composting, this can go directly into our garden beds or it can go into our compost directly to start breaking down. Now beware, when I say they produce a lot of waste, this is about two weeks worth waste from about a dozen birds on this tray. And I'll pull it out here a little bit so you can see what I'm talking about as far as amounts go. It doesn't have a strong smell because it's the winter time, but this is time for us to come in and unload all this. Now I just saw somebody post online that they actually gave up raising quail because of the amount of waste. But again, as a gardener, you don't have to look at what they're creating as waste. You can look at it as a supplement, as a food for your garden. Now for our bedding, and we use this bedding on the trays themselves to keep the trays lasting a little bit longer, we use just these wood shavings. And the wood shavings can go right alongside the waste into our compost just to start composting in general because they provide a great source of carbon for our microorganisms to feed on to help them break down the compost in general. So as a gardener, this bedding that's in here, you can see all those wood chips? They're absolutely fantastic for your compost. So we've talked a little bit about the eggs. We've talked about the fact that you can harvest the quail themselves and have a form of meat. And we've talked about the waste, but there are other byproducts of this that are gonna be useful for you. For one, we've got feathers. Now feathers are gonna fly around when you're raising any kind of poultry, but they often fall down into where the waste is, etc., and they'll compost just great. In fact, there are folks who make something called feather meal, and we haven't experimented with that yet, but feather meal is supposed to be a pretty good amendment, a nitrogen-rich amendment to add to your garden space. But on top of that, the feathers can also be used for a number of other things in the garden. For example, you can actually use them as a layer of mulch, and they will break down over time. 
It does take a while for feathers to break down if you don't do any kind of preparation to them. But again, a layer of mulch that's going to help with moisture retention. That is absolutely fantastic use of quail feathers. And you can get them particularly whenever you're harvesting the quail for meat. You're going to have those feathers left over. Why not make use of them? Now, actually, I was looking around to see other uses of feathers online, and I found somebody who was using the quail feathers to make fly fishing lures. So tons of uses for the feathers, but specifically for us, we would want to use them in our garden as a mulch or add them to our compost. Now there's an additional byproduct to the eggs that you're getting to eat, and that protein there, and that is the massive number of eggshells that you're going to get. Now these eggshells are about a third the size of chicken eggs, but they actually contain more calcium carbonate than chicken eggs. These are a great source of calcium for your garden. Now we can crush these down. We could even do a, a really fine grinding of the shells. And then these can go into the garden to provide some calcium over time. Or we can actually transform this into something called calcium acetate. And we've not done a video on that, but if you'd like to see it, that's a water soluble form of calcium that we can use to water our plants and really help out in the garden. If you'd like to see that video, go ahead and let us know in the comments because that's something we're really interested in experimenting with. But these eggs can be used as a great source of additional calcium, especially if you have struggled in the past with your plants having a problem with calcium deficiency. It's probably most seen on tomatoes whenever we have something called blossom end rot. Typically that's a watering issue where you're not getting enough calcium up into your plant, but if you do have a calcium deficiency in general and your plants are overly bushy or the leaves themselves are starting to curl back because of it, this is a great way to add additional calcium to your soil, especially over time. And these of course can go right into your compost as well to again, break down over time. All right, folks, I'm gonna interrupt this video briefly for our 24th giveaway in our 31 days of Guten Gardening Gardening Gift Giving. Well, folks, once again, lots of people entered into today's giveaway. Remember, if you want to be entered into the next giveaway, all you have to do is comment on this video or on one of our community posts between now and the next video. And one more thing, sometimes spam bots come along and try to get your information from you. The only time we'll contact you is if you're the winner in the video and it'll be from Guten Gardening. There won't be any additional information attached to our name like Telegram or anything else like that. All right, let's go ahead and see what today's prize is. Yesterday we asked you all if we should add soil amendments or organic fertilizers as prizes and 86% of you said yes. So today is gonna to include two of our favorite organic fertilizers. That's Job's Organic Bone Meal and Myco's Mycorrhizal. This is something we absolutely love to enhance our roots. Well, I hope you'll agree, another great prize. Let's see who day number 24's winner is. Wow, we still have seven more to go, but today our winner is Laura Giuliano. Congratulations, Laura Giuliano. Well done, folks. Give Laura a congratulations in the comments, but don't say her name so that she can be surprised when she finds out she's won. And Laura, when you see that you've won, go ahead and leave a comment and we'll be in touch to get that prize out to you as quickly as possible. All right, let's head back to our video. Now, I would say for me, the reasons I've already given are enough to say that quail are a great fit for a gardener, but there are a couple more. And I'm talking about the additional fertilizers that these quail can help provide to us. You know, two of the fertilizers that we use often in our garden are bone meal and blood meal. And we've never actually tried to make blood meal from our quail, but I know that's something that people probably in our community have done. And we'd love to hear your experience with it because that's something we're interested in doing. Because you know, blood meal adds a great source of nitrogen into our garden. And I've read that it's actually fairly straightforward and it's something we do want to experiment with in the future. But if you've tried making your own blood meal at home, let us know in the comments what that process was like for you. But the other fertilizer that I mentioned is bone meal. And bone meal is pretty straightforward to make. It's another great source of calcium and phosphorus. So when we're talking about making bone meal, what we're talking about is taking the bones that are left over after we've culled and after we've eaten the quail, boiling them for a while so that the meat comes off, and then baking them in the oven to dry them out and grinding up that bone. That creates a great 
garden supplement as well. As a gardener, by raising quail and using their byproducts, you're gonna be able to increase your soil fertility and reduce waste. I do have to remind you though that anything that you're gonna use from the quails in terms of their waste does need to be composted in order to remove any harmful pathogens or bacteria that are in it initially. But I tell you what, in just over the one year that we've been raising these quail, we have loved all the benefits and I've certainly loved all the meals that we've gotten from them. And that's why we're saying today that quail, raising quail, can be something that gardeners should definitely fall in love with. Well, thank you so much for watching the video. Congratulations once again to today's winner. We hope you all enjoyed and found the video useful. If you did, or if you have any questions about the quail that we're raising, let us know in the comments, and we'll do our best to reply as quickly as possible. If you did enjoy today's video, don't forget to give us a like, leave us a comment, remember to share and subscribe, and most importantly, remember, when you're with us, you are new to grow.